What's up guys, it's me Jeremy. When it comes to League of Legends, there's so many abilities that back in the day used to just be totally different, the kind of thing that you would never expect. And it turns out that there's quite a lot of these hidden gems from back in the old days of League of Legends that I think are actually quite interesting. So we've looked through and picked out a bunch of our favorites. Some of these abilities are honestly crazy overpowered, some of them aren't though, but overall it's probably a good thing that they were changed. And it's always good fun to take a look back at them and think at how they might have affected the game if they still existed right now. Also, by the way, guys, we're finally launching our Hearthstone channel. So to give you guys maybe a little bit of incentive to check it out, as well as just to celebrate, I guess you could say we're going to be giving away $140 worth of RP in this video. Originally, I would have only given away 100, but actually in our last giveaway, we had one of the winners not claim their prize. So I'm just going to increase the amount on this giveaway and hopefully it works out. Super easy to enter. As always, just check the link in the description. And if you guys enjoyed the video, hit that like button. And if you don't, definitely hit that dislike. And if we reach a thousand likes on this video, I'm going to make myself a sandwich. Anyways, let's get started. So first up on our list, we have an ability from Shaco with his old Q, which was called Maniacal Cloak. This ability was the old form of Shaco's Deceive, but instead of being a one-time cast that stealthed him that then went on cooldown, it was actually instead a toggle on-off ability that consumed 15 mana per second. This was probably a good change just because it pretty much gave him almost permanent stealth as long as he had the mana, and that kind of thing is never really good for the game, but in the trade-off, we got Shaco's own personal flash effect, which does set him up for some pretty crazy escapes, invades, and jukes possible. The old Shaco ability was balanced by the mana drain effect, so you'd have to deactivate it sometimes or maybe just completely risk running out of mana. But if you think about it, you would only pay 150 mana for 10 seconds of stealth, and that's still a pretty low trade-off for the amount of power that you actually get from having the potential of permanent stealth. You could pretty much act like permanent stealth by just toggling Maniacal Cloak when out of vision range or moving between bushes, turning it off to save mana when you set up your traps and all sorts of stuff, so it was definitely abusable. And Maniacal Cloak honestly would have been super frustrating to play against, because Shaco would have been able to take all the time he needed to set up his boxes and aim for his backstabs, so forcing him to play a bit fairer with only a short period of stealth and a cooldown before it could be used again was definitely a healthy change overall, well, if you can even call Shaco healthy in the first place that is. Next up we have Tarek, who if we take a look at his pre-rework ultimate that you guys might have known, the original version of that ultimate Radiance actually used to be a lot different. Not one to be a little bit outdone when it comes to being fabulous, Tarek would emit a brilliant light that would heal himself and nearby allies over time, up to 50 base health per second, but also scaling with his ability power. And the cool thing is that this isn't really one of those, you know, activate and it heals over 3 seconds kind of deal. Radiance was actually a toggle ability as well so we could activate it and then leave it on until he just had no mana left. It became much more expensive to keep on the longer it was active, kind of like Nivea's ultimate at the time, but you'd only need maybe 5 seconds of permanent healing to completely break a teamfight and nullify all the damage the enemy team might have dealt. The range on it was actually pretty insane too, at 550 units of radius, it was even further than a flash in terms of the area of effect, so keeping allies in heal range would be quite easy to do in a teamfight. Riot do have kind of a policy to try to avoid direct healing abilities where possible because they're so anti-fun to deal with, so they tend to use barriers or maybe other temporary measures instead, so it's not that surprising that Tark would eventually lose this version of the ultimate for something that was a little bit easier to play around instead. And the first properly crazy overpowered ability that we're taking a look at today has got to be Twisted Fate's old pick a card effect. A lot of people know about his air of effect gold card, you know, his gold card used to be an area of effect stun, but there are also some finer details too. So blue card would give 60 bonus damage on your next attack, but also it would let you pick another card afterwards. Red card attacks would explode, dealing base damage in an area for up to 125 magic damage with a 1.5 second slow, and gold cards would deal up to 250 base magic damage in an area of effect and stun everyone for 1.5 seconds. So you definitely heard that right, I mean why would you ever choose a red card for half the damage and a slow rather than double the damage and a stun at the time, well the answer is that you pretty much never would. You could chain blue cards for consistent DPS and for taking towers because they let you pick more cards afterwards and you could just spam blue cards over and over and over again, but you would pretty much never choose red ever because it was essentially useless in pretty much all situations compared to gold card. 
Twisted Fate's old gold card was of course super broken and you could just stun and burst out entire groups of enemies without really needing to do much at all. It was an auto attack enhancement after all, so you really just can't miss it. So all you needed to do was pick a gold card and then aim for the enemy champion in the middle of a group. And honestly, this is probably one of the most busted abilities that ever existed. And fortunately, it was changed to single target to both nerf its effectiveness and maybe make red card a little bit more valuable, since that change made it the only area of effect ability. And since we're talking overpowered, how about the old version of Karthus's passive, Death Defiled? We all know and love Karthus as kind of that lich mage that sticks around after death to dish out some pain for those extra 6 seconds or so, but what would be kind of broken is if back in the day it was 10 seconds, and even more so, it would be even more broken if he could literally respawn himself instantly at his base when he killed an enemy champion, and that's exactly what he used to be able to do, and it was honestly incredibly busted. Instant revives were pretty much untouched territory outside of the old summoner spell, and Karthus players loved it so much that running revive on Karthus became a pretty normal thing to do right up until it was axed from the game. It's super punishing to spend all of the effort and resources to actually kill someone, only for them to pop up back again and then get straight back into the fight using teleport, so it's definitely a good thing that it was removed, both from Karthus's passive and as a summoner spell overall. The biggest downside would probably be accidentally killing someone maybe right after you died so that you would respawn and then not have more time to dish out damage in a teamfight, but even with that trade off, the power in the free respawn lets you use your ultimate anyway, and it's just way too good to have an actual place in the game. Next up, let's see if some of you guys remember the dodge effect. We've talked about it quite a bit in a few times as an old removed game mechanic that gave you a chance to dodge basic attacks. And it turns out that Sivir used to actually have a ton of dodge chance as well. A lot of people know Jax as being kind of like the dodge king back in the day, but Sivir was actually kind of the queen in a sense, and she got it for free from her passive fleet of foot. It increased your dodge chance by up to 25% while moving, so 1 in 4 basic attacks would just miss her completely, and this kind of ability really rewarded players that could kite or orb walk, and it pretty much acted just like Sivir just avoids 25% of all damage from 80 carries at the time. Dodge was eventually removed from the game for various reasons, mostly because it was kind of uninteractive and it was also too RNG based and the only place you can kind of find dodge anymore in the game is the 100% dodge chance equivalent that Jax now gets while using his counter strike. And putting it on an AD carry where most damage is going to be dealt in duels with basic attacks is pretty game changing honestly and although it took a while to scale up to the full 25% at higher levels, even just occasionally avoiding a basic attack in lane could often be all it took to turn a fight completely around in such high DPS combat. At max level, with full items, 80 carries could probably just kill each other in 2 hits, maybe 3. And with that in mind, a 25% dodge chance could honestly be game changing and just totally huge because it's quite likely that you would get one good dodge off in a duel while your opponent wouldn't and you would just destroy the enemy 80 carry. Next up today on our list, we have Ash's old E, which was Plentiful Bounty, which was also known as Accumulate Wealth. This one was by far the weakest ability on our list, and it gave Ash bonus gold depending on what level the ability was every time she killed a unit. Yeah, that's all it did. Don't get us wrong, free gold is kind of a lovely thing to have, but it needs to either be a passive effect or stapled onto another ability like Gangplank Skew to be worth having. It took up an entire ability slot just for some bonus gold, and it was super boring, and it was replaced by Hawkshot in Season 1. Hawkshot quickly became Ash's trademark vision control ability, and she did actually keep the bonus gold portion as a passive on her Hawkshot for quite a long time too, although the numbers were tweaked here and there. The gold generating passive lasted all the way until season 5 when Ash finally received a little bit of a rework, so it stuck around in some form for a pretty long time actually before it was eventually removed, so even though it was quite weak, it does still earn itself a mention on our list. At least we still have 180 carry with a gold generating ability, Draven, and let's be real, he definitely suits it much better. And that's going to wrap up this video on some abilities that were removed back in the day. Definitely let us know in the comments below which ability you think was the best and maybe why. We'll keep digging for more of these, but for now it looks like that's going to be it for me. If you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like, subscribe if you want. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.